Cool tips for landscape photographers. As landscape photographers, do we still need to use auto exposure bracketing to create high dynamic range images? In a Canon, settings go something like this. So historically, on most of our past workshops, our brightest exposure, we've tried to get to look something like this, where we have our shadows opening up just a bit off the dark side. So none of them are pegged out, they're just opened up a little bit. And then our highlights, we've tried to get exposed back down as about a medium tone or darker. Historically, that's been a really good way of getting information that'll put together in post-processing, whether using photomatics, um, Aurora or Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. But do we still need a bracket exposure with our cameras in the field? Well, considering that our eyes see between 24 and 30 stops of light in conjunction with our brain as our eyes peer through the scene, and our best digital cameras now get up to about 16 stops of light, I'd say the answer is if you're trying to create as much information in a scene as your eye can gather, you're probably still going to need to bracket. Okay, given that it does sound like maybe we still need to bracket in the field, but what does that bracketing procedure look like? Do we capture the middle image and one stop on either side, the middle image and two stops on either side, the middle image and three stops on either side, or, or all? All of the images one stop apart. What's the spread look like? How many images do we need to capture to give us good results in post-processing? Well, early on in the early days of HDR, it used to be that we needed to capture images that were one stop apart for sure. Otherwise, then in areas where there was a huge contrast, let's say, um, up in the sky here, you might see uh, some really jittery edges. If we started to bracket too many stops apart between images, more than one stop apart, that edge boundary would look kind of goofy. And let's just take a look and see what happens now if we bracket, let's say, three stops apart. So effectively what we can do is we can select the middle image the two outer images. So this is going to be a combination of three images and they are three stops apart from, from the middle tone. Take them into camera raw. Select them all. And run them into HDR. Incidentally in HDR, I don't auto align because I do use a tripod if things are blowing around, I haven't found deghosting works all that well anyway. So if it's blowing around, I'm probably not going to put them together this way. So I would turn to ghosting off in this case. But I do like to apply the auto settings. Uh, have the computer do a little bit more work uh, to get myself started. I'm fine with that in the post-processing end of things. Okay. So let's zoom in. This has been put together. We have a new image. It's the... HDR combination of those two spread wide apart. And right here in this boundary is where we used to see a lot of failure. Uh, but we're not seeing that anymore. So this is quite fascinating. Okay, we're back here in Bridge. And this was the result from combining the middle and then three stops off on either side. And for grins and giggles, let's just go ahead and compare that with processing all seven at once. Okay, so here are the two images. There's the one with uh, three stops, three images, three stops apart. Here's the one that is seven images, one stop apart per image. Let's take those into Photoshop for comparison. So we'll select both of them. Tools, down to Photoshop, over and down. Load files into Photoshop layers. And on top we have the three images. So if I toggle the view off, we'll see the one from below, which is seven images. 
So with the view of the three images turned off, what we're noticing is maybe just a little bit more contrast, brightness in the beams, just a little more contrast. So perhaps seven in this particular image, having seven spaced one stop apart creates a an improved look. So yeah. Okay, so let's take this other bracketed series and combine it uh, with the middle one and then the two outer ones, three stops from the middle one. Let's take those into Camera Raw. Select them all, Control A. Hover on any given thumbnail, click on the three dots, run up to merged HDR. We'll merge. And we'll say done. And then let's compare that with merging all seven. Take them into Camera Raw. Merge. And we'll just call it all seven. And we'll say done. And we'll take these two images into Photoshop as layers. And our goal here is just to look at, see if there's any different difference, if there's a noticeable difference between merging seven, one stop apart, or merging just three with uh, three stops apart. So let's toggle the top one on and off. And kind of on a big overall image scale, I don't see any difference at all. Let's maybe zoom in. Let's, let's look into shadows here. Let's see if we see any difference. I don't see a change at all. And again, I don't see a change at all. So if you're going to use only Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, same same basic product, to put your HDR images together, then I don't think you're getting any value in getting the intermediate images other than there's just more information in case you make a mistake in your bracketing. Uh, you have more to work with potentially, which is always worthwhile, but uh, you don't necessarily need it to, to create an image. Okay, I think there is value in also running this through Photomatics um, to see if we notice any differences there. I like to feed uh, TIFF files into Photomatics. It allows Adobe to embed certain things like chromatic aberration, the white balance I might like, et cetera, um, into the image before Photomatics gets a hold of it. I just think it works better that way. So to do that uh, here in Bridge, you need to make a selection of all of the images. Make sure that this is outlined, so Control-A selects all of the images, then we'll come over here to Tools, then we'll run down to Photoshop, we'll call up the Image Processor, and this is set up from the last time I did it, I'm gonna save as a TIFF, and I'll click Run. It'll go through here and take every raw file, apply the default settings I have for my raw images, and then create TIFF files out of them, and put them as a uh, new folder, a new subfolder in the folder they came from. So I should be able to go back into here, into Bridge. Let's look at what folders are available. There's that new folder just created. So I can point Photomatics into here and get the files I want. We'll call it Photomatics. We'll browse into there. And let's just choose uh, all seven to start off with. 
We've already reduced chromatic aberration. We don't need that toggled on. That is the default sailing for detailed. That's what balance looks like. Um, that's just their very top default setting. We'll just compare default settings. I don't think I like this, but that's really not what we're doing here. So we'll click on finish. And I'll save that final image. And we'll get rid of that one. And now we'll just load the middle one. So it's going to be that outer one, that outer one, and one, two, three, that one there. Open. And finish. Save final image. And click Save. Back in the bridge, we'll compare the two. We see a little bit of shift, a little bit of change. Let's take them into Photoshop where we can see them up close if we want to. So as we toggle this on and off, we can see a change up in the sky. I don't really see anything happening down in the foreground. It's all back in the really bright areas. If we zoom into those areas back there, Okay, that's all seven, one stop apart, versus just three images, three stops apart. I do think that the more information provided by seven images, one stop apart, gives a little bit nicer looking sky. Uh, again, that's using Photomatics now I will go ahead and run the other image through the same way and we'll be right back here in a moment to compare those. Okay, we are back in Photoshop and I just ran this image through the exact same way. I did the previous image and if we toggle the seven shots one stop apart off, we see what's going on underneath where we had three images uh, three stops apart, and so with Photomatics, I prefer having one stop apart, seven images, to three images, three stops apart. So by and large, that's actually looking best up in the sky for sure. I mean, that sky looks kind of nice. That doesn't look right at all. So that extra information does make a difference. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to assume that somewhere in the future, as Photomatics evolves, it may not need that extra information of, of seven images one stop apart. But for right now, it still seems to make a difference. All right, so to start summing things up, uh, one of the things we haven't talked about is what about taking one single image from that bracketed series and opening up the shadows. So to do that, we'd probably want to choose the image where the highlights were as close to being the way they should be as possible. We really can't blow out highlight detail. And so this particular image, um, that was the case. I did some noise reduction on it so we can see, you know, get the noise out of the foreground here. But if we look at this and compare it to um, a bracketed one, this was where we bracketed uh, all seven. Of course, it's the same in the, in the three one when we're using Adobe Camera Raw. It's just a world better to have the bracketed image. That is because our sensors do not capture that much color in the deep shadows. So if we've darkened the exposure enough to record decent detail in the highlights, this foreground's going quite dark. So this was 4.9. Let's come back over here to 4.9. That's what the starting image looked like. 
there's just not that much color capture in that foreground. So that as we start to open it up and look for the detail, it doesn't have really the proper color captures. That's just the nature of sensors. They don't record faithful colors in the deep, deep shadows. So bracketing is still, I think, going to be uh, the answer for a while. I mean, eventually, yeah, maybe sensors will get there, but I don't think we're there yet. I wouldn't gamble on it out in the field. You spend all the time and effort to get out somewhere. You might as well do a little bit of bracketing to make sure you're going home with the right information. So in summation, you know, do you bracket um, three images, three stops apart or four stops apart or five stop apart? Or do you bracket um, you, a spread of, let's say, one and you get seven images or nine images? That's going to be up to you and what software you're going to be using. I have a tendency to prefer to get more information, so I will probably continue to bracket uh, pretty heavily for a while longer yet. You know, I had a parting thought. I was looking around at these images and I got to thinking that uh, the camera I used for this was a little bit older. It's a 5D Mark IV, so it really isn't the latest and greatest. So I went back and I took um, three images, which gave me two more stops of light on this particular sample here, and got a slightly different result. Uh, this is going to be a bracketed of three, one stop on either side of the image that was used here, and we have a great improvement. This is probably going to more closely resemble the kind of look you're going to get with a more modern camera. Um, still probably not going to be as good as if you did just a little bit of bracketing to get that color capture a little bit brighter in your foreground so you get a little more accurate colors. You know, the right answer for everybody would be just to go somewhere, take some test sample shots, and compare it to what you do with a single image. And that will probably give you the best idea about what you can do with your gear. So go find a sunset or sunrise somewhere. It doesn't have to be a pretty one, just something with a lot of dynamic range. And uh, do some test brackets, compare it with some single shots, and you'll get a real good feel for how your camera equipment works and how you might like to move forward in the future. Interesting.